Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Matt, and the pattern I'm gonna be walking through tonight is another Great Smoky Mountains, Appalachian Mountains pattern, very old pattern. I got it from Ian Rudder's book, Angler's Companion to the Great Smoky Mountains. Now, it's not a very well-known pattern. I doubt you got here by searching for the Hazel Creek Dry Fly. Um, maybe our grandparents back in North Carolina have used it or heard of it, but it's a pretty simple tie. It's kind of fun, can be very effective. I think you'll like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, and like many Smoky Mountain Appalachian attractor patterns, this thing can be tied probably as big as a size 10 down to about a 16. I'm gonna go with a size 12. Standard length barbless dry fly hook. I'm gonna use brown thread. Black would be fine. I think brown looked just a little bit better. I'm gonna lay down a base to the start of the bend. Okay, the tail is golden pheasant tippets. Now you'll want to take a pretty small feather, even for a, a fly this big. You see the, the two bars. I like the two bars showing, and we'll be able to get them with a tail about that long. Whereas if you had a big feather, um, to show both bars, the tail would probably be a little bit too long. So find the right size feather. Now the best way cut these off without the tips getting misaligned is grab it by the tips let's uh, yeah let's do it right there and then reach your scissors in to about six or so feathers or fibers of the feather and then pull the main part out and what you're left with should be lined up so those are pretty well lined up just get your length right. We'll go back one more. And take a couple wraps right there. Check your position. I think that's going to be fine right there. Go ahead and secure this in. Bury these butt ends up here. Now the next component are the upright wings. So any dry fly, hackle and light color, cream or done even, the end slips. So try to line your end slips up and I am going to tie them with the concave sides or the convex sides together so they kind of flare out a little bit. It's not that vital because we're going to do some figure eight wraps which would spread them apart anyway but this will help. So find the position you want We'll get your thread where we want to tie them. Okay, that's about right. And envision flipping those up and then measure your lengths. That might be a little long right there. It's a bushy hackle, but it's not, you know, two times a hook gap. So I'm going to take it about right there. I think that'll be fine. Okay, a couple of wraps to secure that. Now we can go ahead and cut this excess off right here. Be careful, mind your tail so you don't grab some of those fibers. Now fold it up and we'll put some thread wraps in front of it. You might get a few fibers. You see those couple of fibers sticking forward? It just depends on the hackle tips you're using. It might be unavoidable. You can trim them or probably just live with them. So check that after you get them standing upright. They're a little bit split, but I'm going to split them significantly. About like that. So it's going to take a couple wraps in between. Maybe do that twice. Let's see. Okay, that's about the the. Split, I think looks good and next up we'll take the thread back to the, the back of the hook where we're going to do the dub the body now you can reach in here and trim these if you want it's going to be hackled so it probably doesn't really matter but it might help make it just a bit neater. All 
Now the dubbing on this is just a, a cream or a light colored. I've done a couple with synthetic, but I think Rabbit turned out just a little bit nicer looking. It didn't have that variegated look that the synthetic had. So dub about three inch noodle, just enough to cover your body up to the, to the wing and maybe one wrap in front of it. Okay, I've got a little too much there. It happens. I don't want that much in front of it, so I'm going to back it off a little bit. Try to spin that back onto my thread. And get my one good wrap in front of those wings right there. Okay, now check them. Are they still... We haven't disturbed them too much there. They'll get a little bit more disturbed when we wrap this hackle. So... Light colored hackle, grizzly hackle will work. It's going to give you the, the light. So put it on your hackle gauge or just spin it around the hook and, and determine what length you want. I think that's a good starting point right there. Actually, I already prepared this feather. That's why it is that stem is showing. So I'm going to catch this in in front of the wing. Two or three wraps. Actually, I'm going to start the first two wraps behind the wings. So I will take this and get another wrap back here. And don't worry if you think you're messing up that, that rabbit dubbing because this hackle will cover it in just a second anyway. So take your thread back to the eye, or just a little behind the eye. We want to snip off this butt end right here. Now wrap the hackle. If you've got enough to do it without hackle pliers, uh, that's good. If you need your hackle pliers, go ahead and grab them. I'm going to have to use mine because I'm going to put several wraps on here and by the time I'm done wrapping it, I might only have, probably have less than an, an inch of this feather to be working with. So I'm going to try to get at least two, maybe three behind the wings. Be careful or you will start pushing them forward. But if you do that, that's probably fine because when we get in front of them, we can start pushing them back. Okay, I'm trying not to let this feather spin on me as I wrap it. And I'm trying not to hit the camera with every wrap, which is about four inches in front of me. So if you're tying at home without a camera, it makes it a little bit easier. And this big blue backstop behind me, that kind of makes it a little bit of a, a challenge too. Okay, so that's pretty bushy. And that's kind of what we want for these Smoky Mountain attractor patterns. So I'm gonna zigzag that through there. Don't worry if you're pushing some of those fibers forward right now. We should be able to take care of those. Whoops. Okay, get a little bit of that fuzz off my thread. So I'm gonna pull this back and then start your head. Right behind the, the eye. Now this is pretty thin thread, so I can get several wraps without building it up. So you don't take it too far back. We want this hackle to be coming out as perpendicular from the, the shank as possible, but at the same time, you have to take it far enough back that when you let go, it's not gonna be sticking forward of the eye. So let's see. Okay, I think that's gonna be workable right there. Let's go ahead and whip finish this before that hackle starts flaring back forward on us. Try not to catch these fibers here. Okay, and that whip finish just broke on me. So how do you recover from that? Well, you gotta spend a few more thread wraps 
and work on your head. Now I'll have another tag end of thread to have to cut off, but with some head cement, that's going to be fine. That happens. Probably happens to me more than I would like to admit, but not all the time. So reach in here and snip off that thread. Now I've got another piece of thread right here I'm going to have to snip off. And don't forget this hackle tip sticking off right here. So let's, let's spin that around so we can get our scissors right up in there. And take a look at it. We didn't mangle these wings up too bad. They're still split on us a little bit there. But we've got a nice big bushy hackle. This thing will drift through all kinds of water. Smoky Mountain pattern called the Hazel Creek. So that's all, folks. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.